Welcome to Fiction Narratives. Chapter 21, The Battle Begins. Be cautious, Raiden. If we're apprehended, Ares might escape. Ares's powers are fueled by mankind's desire for war, making it easy for him to regain strength if he manages to break free, warned Diana, alerting Raiden to the potential threat of Ares. Despite promoting war, rage, and hatred, Ares was not above fleeing to ensure his own survival. Don't worry. This time, we'll aim for the kill, assured Raiden. Are you not a bit too eager to take someone's life? Diana inquired, taken aback by the newfound determination in Raiden's expression. Why shouldn't I be? He's a monster. Hundreds of children are suffering as we speak because of the war he incited, and millions in the past, responded Raiden. For a god like Ares, it's understandable to want him dead. He is driven by his divinity, ensuring he will always incite war, explained Diana as she leaped onto the rooftops of Buchanan International. Raiden followed suit, and Diana continued her discourse. However, for ordinary criminals, killing them isn't the right solution. Humans, by nature, can learn to become better. They can undergo rehabilitation and be forgiven for their sins, Diana reasoned. Raiden glanced at the rooftop entrance door, muttered Nepo P.U., then turned to Diana, stating, I disagree, before walking inside. What is there to disagree about? Raiden Diana followed after him. The idea that criminals should be forgiven or given the chance to rehabilitate. I believe those are luxuries a criminal doesn't deserve if their crimes are severe, Raiden expressed as he crouched and surveyed the area. He then checked for cameras above, saying, Akam MDNA Anad El Bizivni. We are invisible now, but be quiet. Let's not give him a chance to escape, Raiden advised as he navigated the hallway, searching for Aaron Buchanan's office. What do you propose, then if they are not to be rehabilitated, what should be done Diana inquired. As I mentioned, it depends on the crime. But in general, if you take a life, then your own life is forfeited. Only the victim's family can forgive you, sparing you perhaps. However, commit murder more than once, and you don't deserve to live anymore. Of course, there must be irrefutable evidence proving your guilt, Raiden explained. An eye for an eye. How you do realize how that ends, right Diana questioned. The world goes blind that's nonsense. If you make a mistake, you pay for it, plain and simple. What does the world have to do with this you kill, you shall be killed. Done, Raiden asserted. Isn't that a rather savage way of thinking Diana remarked. A criminal might try to convince you otherwise, but it's not the case. Let me ask you, Diana, how many people has the Joker killed Raiden inquired. I am unaware of the numbers, replied Diana. The Joker has killed 53 people crimes recorded of him either pulling the trigger or blowing up a building. Now, let me ask you, how many times has he been arrested Raiden repeated. I am also unaware of this number, Diana admitted. The Joker was arrested more than 19 times, six of which he was sent to maximum security prison. He escaped each time. The first time, he had only killed three, the second time, 12, the 3rd, 27, the 4th, 33, the 5th, 42, and the 6th, 53, explained Raiden. Now think with me, Diana. If he had been killed the first time, we would have only lost 3 lives. Instead, he was sent to prison, escaped, and took the lives of 12 and so on. Essentially, because Batman and all of you in the Justice League wanted to rehabilitate the Joker and fix him, the lives of 53 people were lost. In other words, to the Justice League and Batman, the Joker's life is deemed more important than the lives of 53 innocent people. Hold on, Raiden. You're just speaking from numbers. Life isn't math. We can't be the judges and executioners, we can't kill everyone we think doesn't deserve to live, replied Diana, appalled by Raiden's ideas. Can't we you are the Justice League the Justice League? Where is the justice for those 53 dead people and this isn't some random crook on the streets? I'm not a monster, I won't kill someone for stealing or fighting or being in a gang. But 53 people, on camera what more can he do? Raiden, please, you're making too much noise. We'll continue our talk later. Look, pointed Diana at the top of a room that displayed the name storage. Storage room on a top floor. That's very suspicious, spoke Raiden. 
Using his magic, Raiden opened it up and walked inside, it was mostly empty. Oh, God, said Diana as she looked in front of her. Raiden looked the same way to see a giant dark piece of armor a full piece armor that resembled a robot from a mecha anime. Its size was 4 meters high. What the hell is that, some sort of new weapon spoke Raiden. No. This is. This is a god's work. To be specific, it's Hephaestus's work. It's believed to have been lost to time the Annihilator armor, said Diana, shocked. Her knowledge was limited to what she had read as a child, but its description and aura fit exactly. As if on cue to respond to her shock, the armor's eyes glowed red, and a voice sounded, Welcome, Diana of Themyscira. It would seem the fates have reunited us again. Tell me, sister, do you still hold the same baseless and meaningless faith in mankind after so many years the voice was clearly Ares? Yes, I do. No matter how much time passes, I will always believe in them, said Diana. Such delusions. Of course, what did I expect the half-sons and daughters of Zeus, always fated to be heroes of humanity? Unlike you fools, I was born a god, and as such, I know. I know mankind's truth. And as such, I encourage it, spoke Ares. A god who harms children, as said Raiden. Children oh, that little lass from a few days ago. How is she dead yet or merely crippled, I couldn't care less. I have killed many of Zeus' children. She's smart, though. She managed to escape, and I didn't want to bother with chasing her, spoke Ares, enraging Raiden. Raiden, however, was no fool. He wasn't going to blindly attack, so he decided to go back to Ares' earlier point and taunt him. You know mankind's truth or perhaps you're jealous of it after all, regardless of what title you call yourself a god or a demon, creator of war or evil your life is bound to us. If there's no conflict, then there's no you. Pathetic, really. All the arrogance that gods have, yet their entire existence is dependent on the same beings they claim to be superior to, spoke Raiden, antagonizing Ares and taunting him. Ho. Oh. And who's this little human I do sense some interesting presence from you, but a maggot nonetheless. You think my life is dependent on you foolishness. I guide humans like the lambs they are, control them, and lead them to war, spoke Ares. Oh, really my dear pathetic god, the one who harms children. After we're done here today, after you die, humanity will continue to wage war. It will continue to wage conflict. It is our nature, not your influence. You are merely a leech that latched itself to our hatred and rage and pretends to be the puppeteer. But the truth is, if not for us, your existence would be meaningless, retorted Raiden, taunting Ares further. You dare. Child, you will die first. I will annihilate you. Ares activated his armor as his body moved inside of it. The armor was fast and on another level. Raiden took notice of that immediately and shouted, Alpha Tau Lambda Alpha. The spell forced Ares in place for a few seconds, enough for Diana to attack with a punch and for Raiden. Throne of Heroes, let's kill a god, shall we? Summoning ceremony initiated, Servant Class, Lancer. Servant Tear, S Servant Name, Skathag. I come from the Land of Shadow. My name is Skathag. 3 minutes and 43 seconds that's how long you will last in this body. I won't teach you anything about my powers. Beat him on your own. Show me your talent. If you fail to impress me, then I will refuse to be summoned by you again. Hearing these words, Raiden instantly felt it the power surged through him. Until now, the strongest servant he had summoned was Heracles. Merlin was an exception since he wasn't in control at the time. But now, he felt everything he needed to do. His body movement felt light and accurate, the spear in his hand glowed red, as if it was connected to him an extra body part. Raiden had never felt this complete. Raiden's connection with the body was so strong that he didn't even have time to appreciate the body he was in. Wearing a skin body suit, purple hair, sharp eyes, Skathic was a perfect woman. However, that wasn't all she could bring to the table. Both Ares and Diana felt it. Their instincts screamed at them that whatever power Raiden had activated, it was not something they should underestimate. What they sensed, of course, was Skathika's skill god slayer. Spinning the spear a bit, Raiden looked in front of him and said, 
three minutes. I will make sure to impress you. Then, in a speed that Ares could barely keep up with, Raiden slashed the armor, inflicting a lasting wound inside Ares' body. Ugh, damn you, what are you? A foreign god. Screamed Ares. Wonder Woman then wrapped her lasso around him, pinning him in place. Although he tried to resist, Raiden was already back, slashing his side again, stopping and stabbing him in every major location possible heart, lungs, stomach. Raiden made sure to look him in the eyes as he snuffed the life out of him. However, Ares wouldn't be a god if he died this easily a god of war at that, a formidable warrior who had crossed blades with gods, nonetheless. The core of his armor, ring-shaped started spinning, creating massive waves of red energy, the energy surrounded him with powerful aura and flowed throughout his body, healing him. Years of rage and hatred, I have been collecting it all. I will not lose to you. I will usher a time of endless war. Screamed Ares as the armor sent a magical explosion, sending both Raiden and Wonder Woman flying, breaking the walls of the storage as the battle now moved to the streets. Raiden landed on his feet, and Diana on her back. She had lost her grip on her lasso, so she was now going to use her sword. Walking out of the building, Ares screamed, I am the god of war. My death will never come. As he created a giant red energy sword, clearly made from all the rage he had collected over the years, he slashed towards both Raiden and Wonder Woman. Raiden was quick to dodge, and so did Diana, but the slash was powerful and strong, destroying everything in the vicinity of 30 meters. Huge buildings fell, and many people lost their lives. Diana, we need to kill him fast. He's causing too much collateral damage. I said I won't help you, but a warning is in order. That red energy is dangerous. It's made of human emotions. As such, the effect of God Slayer is nullified as long as it's intact. 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Spoke Skathic, giving Raiden a warning as he prepared to face Ares. Chapter 22, Ares vs Raiden x Wonder Woman. Raiden spun his spear as he dashed towards Ares, the war god blocked with his sword as the two exchanged a barrage of endless blows in a mere three second period. Interfering between them, Diana landed with her sword, swinging it at Ares, her eyes glowing blue as lightning sparks surrounded her sword. Zeus. Ah ha ha my father's power is magnificent, isn't it? Diana said Ares as the red energy in his body burst out, forcing Raiden and Diana to retreat. But, as the child said earlier, our power is bound to humans, and nothing is as powerful as human greed, rage, and thirst for war. Now die. Continued Ares as his sword raged with exceptional power. With one slash, an attack could destroy a full building. Ares kept chasing Diana with the sword's power, but he knew that Raiden was as much of a threat as Diana, so he increased his energy shield. One hit, enough to keep him occupied for half a second. Can you do it spoke Raiden as he dodged the attacks. The three were in a stalemate. Raiden could easily dodge Ares' attacks, but he couldn't land any since the energy negated his god slayer skill and protected Ares from his sure hit attacks. So now, the only way to defeat him is with the help of another variable. Diana heard Raiden's words as she collected her power and condensed it. Her goal was simple yet dangerous to release her full power for a brief moment. She knew that in her full power, she could easily end Ares, but it also meant losing control of herself and going on a rampage. Raiden. Screamed Diana as she removed her bracelets and threw them at Raiden. Put them on me before I lose control. As her body glowed blue, her eyes now filled with electricity. She grabbed her sword and clashed blades with Ares. Their red and blue energy clashed together, destroying almost 500 meters of the vicinity. Human rage, greed, and thirst for war against Diana's power, her belief in humanity, peace, and equality a clash that brought the maximum out of them. Her sword started to crack a bit, but Ares' energy decreased in size. The sword's crack increased faster as Ares smiled and said, Little lost princess. Do you not see that you are already done this world already belongs to me? You will die today, Ares. Even if I fail, he won't. Realizing what she meant by he, Ares then sensed it. He knew Raiden had disappeared from his vision, but he also trusted the energy that had protected him this whole time. His clash with Diana had lowered the energy just enough for one fatal blow, one sure hit that Raiden needed. 
This spear is an embodiment of who I am. And I am the epitome of the spear. Gibalg. An instant zap of red light. Its direction was unreadable as it zigzagged throughout the battlefield. Its speed was readable to both Ares and Diana, but its effect was guaranteed. No matter what, it would pierce Ares' heart, and indeed, it did. From behind his back, Ares looked down to see it a spear, a red blood spear filled with darkness and evil power, the power to kill him, to kill the gods. Ah! Nothing is beyond death. It's the end of all things God, man, concept, or an object. One truth is inevitable. There's an end to everything, spoke Raiden as the life of Ares was coming to an end. No. Uh, I won't die like this. Not today. I will end everything before I'm dead. The red energy that surrounded Ares intensified as Raiden got hold of the tired Diana and jumped away. He looked back at Ares and said, Ridiculous. He survived that. No, he didn't. Ares, the god of war, is dead, but humanity's urge for war is so powerful that it still fuels him. Look at his heart, said Diana. Raiden looked at his heart as the energy condensed itself into a fake heart for Ares. It's merely rage that drives him. He's a husk of what he was, continued Diana. Seeing this, Raiden grabbed the bracelets and placed them on Diana's hand and said, Enough, let's not get you to lose control now. Stay put, Diana. Call for backup, we need some support to help the people affected. As for Ares, leave him to me, I'll handle him. Ares' rage became a torrent of destruction. His loss of control meant that he wasn't channeling the red energy through his sword anymore. Instead, it was raging all around, creating a tentacle-like effect. Ares himself lost himself in the armor. Death, war, and, I am God, war, battles, riches, glory, death, shouted Ares randomly, his body destroying whatever was in the way. Raiden jumped towards Ares, using his evasive techniques. Raiden avoided the tentacles one by one, getting closer and closer to the main body. Reaching there, Raiden attacked the red orb inside his heart, but as soon as he touched it, it exploded him away, pushing him back to his starting point. Raiden did this again, trying to attack different points of his body. Raiden took his arm, cutting it away, but as if it didn't matter, the energy simply created a red arm. Raiden's time was catching up, he felt like he was trapped. No matter what he did, the energy simply regenerated. His noble phantasm Gibalg was ineffective as well, as it pierces the heart, and the heart is already gone. Then suddenly, a rush of information pushed into his head. His mind was filled with the power he never knew he had, as a voice declared. I'm a little impressed. In an unfamiliar body, you handled yourself pretty well. Use this noble phantasm, I was withholding it from you since you didn't seem like someone who deserved it. I see. Wow, you are. Just wow. How long would it take to be this powerful spoke Raiden after getting the information rush? If trained well, not long. Raiden directed his attention towards the red robot made of energy Ares and started activating his powers. His body shone bright as his eyes glowed purple. The gate leading to the haunted land, brimming with death, gate of sky. The noble phantasm, Gate of Sky, temporarily summoned an immense gate to the Land of Shadows. The gate exuded an ominous darkness and an aura of death. Within its confines, one could witness the Land of Shadows, a desolate realm teeming with skeletal figures desperately searching for an escape from torment. The gate drew in all life forms within its range, affecting the red energy of Ares, now pulsating with vitality within his corporeal form. Ares found himself powerless to resist the potent suction energy of the gate. Only a heroic figure endowed with considerable mana and luck could hope to withstand its force. Gradually, the energy was drained from him. Despite attempting to anchor itself to buildings and various objects, resistance proved futile. The inevitable had arrived, the gate of sky meant instant demise, even for gods or conceptual beings. Ares was no exception, his fate was sealed. Raiden sealed the gate, surveying the aftermath of the battle and the widespread destruction it wrought. A smile graced his face as he proclaimed, Humanity wins. However, he, too, succumbed to exhaustion and fatigue, collapsing onto the ground, unconscious. I can no longer die. Unlike that being, 
no poetic or horrific death awaits me. I'll persist until everything within and beyond this world fades away. Perhaps here, I could find my end. Bond increased. Skathic bond 1 rightward arrow bond 3. The battle concluded with significant losses, as many individuals perished due to the collateral damage resulting from the clash and Ares rampage. Consequently, blame was attributed to both Diana and Raiden. The Justice League initiated preparations for a trial concerning the two. Although the public remained unaware, the trial aimed to determine whether Diana should be expelled from the Justice League and if Raiden should face suspension for their actions. Buchanan International and other implicated companies were exposed for instigating the war in Eastern Europe. Cassie's curse was lifted, although a full recovery still required some time. She was gradually regaining mobility. Raiden, I'm sorry, Cassie expressed. Huh for what Raiden responded. Because of me, you're in trouble. I don't want you to be suspended, Cassie said with sadness in her eyes. She felt guilty for the predicament, realizing her recklessness put both her Aunt Diana and her new friend Raiden in jeopardy. Oh, that I don't mind. A hero's duty is to save people, and you, Cassie, have saved many lives. Because of your bravery, we located the god of war Ares, a man responsible for the death of millions. I don't mind facing trouble for being a hero. You should never apologize for saving lives. Raiden praised her efforts. Hearing Raiden's words, Cassie felt a mix of happiness and guilt about her role in the trial. Her mother placed a comforting hand on her head and said, you shouldn't feel guilty, Cassie. What you should do is start training, so such things never happen again. With renewed resolve, Cassie affirmed, Yes, I will. I will be just like Aunt Diana. Wonder Woman. Raiden smiled and added, Wonder Girl for now. Cassie laughed, then had a sudden realization, Wait, Mom, does that mean you approve of me being a hero? Helena smiled and replied, it would be selfish of me to prevent you from becoming who you are a hero. But please promise me one thing, promise that you will always come back to me. I promise. Yay, I'll be a hero. Chapter 23, The Trial 123 people are deceased today in downtown Coast City following a clash between Wonder Woman and her unnamed sidekick against a supervillain. The estimated damage is a staggering $27 million, a cost that you and I will bear through our own taxes. Our hard-earned money goes into covering these expenses, yet superheroes and supervillains continue to wreak havoc worldwide, taking the lives of our friends and family and destroying our property. And they have the audacity to label it as collateral damage. Let me remind you, people, 123 innocent, hard-working American citizens, just like you and me. When must we endure these superhumans why permit this metagene in our world when will our government officially hold these monsters accountable for their actions against regular people like us people call me crazy. They insist I acknowledge that these beings help and save the world. But what about the dead people, who speaks for them these so-called heroes are nothing but a menace. The more heroes created, the more villains born. We must put an end to this epidemic of heroes and put them all in jail. Time's up, ladies and gents. Stay tuned for sports news with Dan Spiral. Thank you for watching CCN News. The television was promptly turned off by Superman holding the remote. He then turned to Wonder Woman, who today was not considered an active member of the Justice League, instead, she was to be on trial. The actions you took were reckless, Diana. Because of you, tens of lives were lost, and the property damage is excessive. As heroes, we understand that such things are inevitable, we aren't always in control, especially against powerful foes like Ares. But you fought alone, something that isn't necessary. Isn't this why we created the Justice League to band together against enemies that are too formidable to face alone spoke Superman. In the trial, the judges were Superman, Batman, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Captain Atom, Flash, Martian Manhunter, and Black Canary. The trial took place at the Watchtower. Diana looked directly at Superman and said, Then why didn't you help the League started investigating Buchanan International way before Cassie or Raiden did so, yet we all stood by and allowed their actions to happen? Superman responded, saying, We had no evidence of such wrongdoing, it was all merely speculation. So what we have multiple heroes here that specialize in espionage and infiltration. 
Why were they not deployed? asked Diana. Captain Adams spoke up in response, that would be an infringement on people's rights. We can't just investigate the lives of people on mere speculation. We are not the police. We are not a governmental association either. The Justice League is here to save humans from villains and protect the world, if ignoring privacy rights will achieve that, so be it, spoke Batman in response, clearly annoyed by this trial. A little child was cursed, a war was raging. I'm an Amazonian warrior, I will fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. And if it means interfering in an ensconced, outdated system to help just one woman, man, or child, I'm willing to accept the consequences, said Diana. Not wanting to speak any longer, she wholeheartedly believed that her actions were the right thing to do. What about Raiden? Why did you allow a new recruit and a teenager in a battle such as that? asked Aquaman. Raiden is no child, he is a warrior. If you haven't been paying attention to the team, due to him, they have done some incredible things even we couldn't do. As for why I allowed him to come with, well, I had no choice. Raiden was prepared to fight me, I wasn't confident in my ability to take him down. I knew that fighting him then and there would result in both of us being exhausted and ambushed by Ares, so I made the only choice that felt right at the time, replied Diana. You expect us to believe a teenager was such a threat to you, Wonder Woman mocked Captain Adam. No, she speaks the truth. Raiden is different from the others in the team, his powers are special. Under the right conditions, he could even rival Superman, the one to reply was Batman. Is that so I'm excited to see this Raiden, spoke Captain Adam. Now, for the voting. Those who believe Diana should be expelled, please raise your hands, said Superman, awaiting his colleagues' votes. As expected, no one raised their hands. Diana may have acted without the League's permission, but the war god Ares was defeated, and no one believed she should be expelled. I can't believe you're being put on trial. For suspension nonetheless. We didn't even get a single chance for a mission together, remarked Raven as she sat with Raiden, who awaited his trial. Does that mean you want to spend time with me? asked Raiden. I just wanted to see more of your silly transformations. But I wouldn't mind spending more time with you, replied Raven. Is that so? Are you not getting along with the others? inquired Raiden. No, it's been fine. They have all been very nice to me. But with you, the feeling is good. Someone who understands the burden of power, perhaps said Raven. Was that a confession I've never had a girl confess to me, Raiden smiled as he joked. Not in a million years. But I will accept your offer. Offer which offer? The date you wanted a few days ago, spoke Raven as she left Raiden to go talk with the others. Well, looks like I might have a chance after all. Raiden turned his head to the right to see Diana walk out. He then looked to the left to see Calder. You got this, Raiden. Wonder Woman wasn't found guilty of anything, you can just do what she did. Robin walked in front and said, Batman is against these trials anyway, he'll back you in there, I'd, thanks. I'll try to be cool in there. Raiden, welcome. Please relax, we'll just ask you some basic questions, and you shall answer them. Then, we'll do the ruling, spoke Superman. Raiden stood opposite the League judges as he awaited his questions. Now, we know of your involvement in the battle a few days ago against the God of War, Ares. We understand the gravity of the situation, and we know that if not for you, many more could have died, said Superman. However, it was also you who instigated this battle. If you hadn't decided to take matters into your own hands, we could have saved more lives by cornering Ares in a battle without any collateral damage. Captain Adam scanned Raiden up and down, feeling a bit disappointed. He said, because of your actions, 123 people died American citizens. How do you plead? Raiden tilted his head at Adam's words and then said, I did the right thing, something you all were too afraid to do. Afraid our insistence on the laws of our nation isn't fear, it's respect. We respect the citizens that make this great nation and follow its orders, spoke Captain Adam. The Justice League doesn't fall under any government, Adam. Watch your words. We do not follow the orders of the United States of America, spoke Batman against Captain Adam's words. Regardless, the battle happened on American soil. As such, it is American laws that need to be discussed here, 
specifically the right of privacy and fair investigation, said Captain Adam. Am I speaking to heroes or what Captain Adam, what are you anyway a hero or a soldier I do not care for your country's laws, nor do I care for their right of privacy. A little child was hurt, cursed by a god of war. Two nations were ripped apart by that organization and that god. Instead of being tried here, you should follow my example. Sticking by the laws of the masses leads to failure, replied Raiden, clearly unsatisfied by the rules and laws imposed on him and the League. We are the Justice League. If we do not uphold our first name, Justice, then we wouldn't be a band of heroes, we would be tyrants, spoke Aquaman. Tyrants I like the sound of that. You should be tyrants. How many villains run rampant around the world because they don't fear you hell, Lex Luthor is running to be Secretary General in the United Nations, a known villain, killer, and vile human by each and every single one of you. But you hesitate to do anything to stop him. Villains don't fear you anymore. All you do is arrest them and send them to a jail that they'll stay in for a maximum one year period before they escape again, replied Raiden, once again criticizing them. Then what do you suggest asked Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern. Kill them. Simple as that spoke Raiden. Silence descended on the League members as they all gasped in shock at what Raiden had said. Raiden, do you understand the gravity of what you are asking said Black Canary, Dinah, boy, you wish to turn the world into a battlefield if heroes start killing people, we will lose the public support and, most of all, our own values. We are heroes, we do not kill. We give people a chance to reform, said Aquaman. Oh ye reform, and how has that worked out mocked Raiden. Eel O'Brien, also known as Plastic Man, was a criminal with a record and jail time. Now he's an active member of the Justice League, a hero that saved many lives. Just because it doesn't result in a 100% success rate doesn't mean we should discard it, replied Batman. Oh please, don't start that with me. Plastic Man was a heist artist. His crimes were against the government and its people, sure, but they didn't result in the deaths and destruction of many homes. I'm not a psycho, nor am I delusional. I'm not here to put a God King rule or showing. I'm here to simply state that some villains deserve death, regardless of the rules. People like Ra's al Ghul, Jinx, Joker, Deathstroke they all deserve an end befitting of their ways, death. Because the longer you let them live, the more people they will kill. In my opinion, you are all responsible for their murders, replied Raiden, dismantling Batman's argument and trying to show that you can easily decide which villains should die or not. Sure, some people can be reformed, but others are beyond saving. Is this for the sake of revenge asked Dinah. Raiden turned his head towards Dinah. He then scanned the entire league as they looked at him like a crazy person. Raiden then realized, you people are truly unbelievable. You can't even realize how your failure to be more effective is leading to more and more villains rampaging throughout the world. And no, Dinah, it's not just for revenge. It's for those people that died. I watched them all, one by one. They were killed without mercy. They begged for their lives, but he didn't care. A man, that one day, either I or you will catch and arrest, committed such atrocities. Yet all you will do is place him in a cell and wait for his natural death. What about the people he killed huh? What about the woman that looked at my pot and screamed that it was my fault that it was my fault that she is dead? How can you allow such a creature to exist in our world knowing what you know, all of you? It's because of you. Screamed Raiden in rage. His eyes glowed golden, and his magic surged, and Superman got up and took a battle stance, as did most of the members. Raiden simply didn't care as his magic surge stopped flowing and his eyes returned to normal, as he said, so Justice League. What is your ruling? Chapter 24, Trials Aftermath So. A three-month suspension, said Calder. Yup, plus weekly counseling from Black Canary. Instead of seeing the logic in my ways, they see a crazy man that needs to be fixed, replied Raiden. Raiden, you said you want villains dead, we are not murderers, said Zaydana. No. I ask for the execution of villains, especially bad villains with very hefty death tolls and are most definitely irredeemable. Raiden replied. We are heroes, we exist to save people. We can't act as judge, jury, and executioners, spoke Robin. 
Sai look, I don't want to repeat this discussion here, but in short, why shouldn't we know prison has been able to keep these monsters in it, except death? Raiden turned and then left, clearly angry about what had happened inside the trial. This boy. Are you sure you want to keep him inside our rank's special team or not, he is powerful. I admit to that, powerful enough to be a threat, and this threat is being allowed freedom inside our headquarters, spoke Captain Adam. At first, his opinion of Raiden was that he seemed interesting, but upon meeting him, he was very disappointed. The kid looked fit and looked the part, but his aura was non-existent. He wouldn't look any different from an average high school boy. But when his aura surged, Captain Adam felt fear. It wasn't like he could sense mana or extraordinary energy, but the anger changed him. His golden eyes felt as threatening as the sun, and his bloodlust was that of a killer who has ended the lives of millions, so his fear was justified. Adam was all too happy when Raiden deactivated his powers and relaxed again, a sense of relief dawned upon him. Raiden has been nothing but an asset to our ranks. He has dismantled three of the most dangerous villains and organizations in a matter of a month. His intentions are good as well. I see no reason to kick him out or treat him any differently from the other kids. He just needs to learn about heroism and what it takes to be one, replied Dinah, Black Canary. Can we even trust him you saw how he reacted, asked Green Arrow. We had a traitor infiltrate our ranks a year ago, and his power wasn't nearly as strong as this kid, spoke Captain Adam. He was the only one who advocated for the removal of Raiden from the Justice League completely and went even as far as to ask for his imprisonment. I have been monitoring Raiden ever since we met him. While I have observed that he has hidden some things from us, his intentions and what he has done have all been pure good. I don't need to remind you that our friend Zatero was saved by Raiden and released from the shackles of the Helmet of Fate. He went as far as to grant the Helmet of Fate its own host, adding to our ranks, replied Batman. Most of us realize that Raiden is a good kid. He's been nothing but help. We can't be too angry at him for his views and beliefs as well. He is still a kid, spoke Superman. I'm not exactly angry at his beliefs, I, for one, think that he had the right idea. In my land, killers are executed. I see no reason why we shouldn't try to apply it here, in the Justice League and the surface world, said Aquaman. The same thing in space. Criminals with double-digit murders are killed on sight. Of course, we, the Green Lantern Corp., have to deliver them to the appropriate authorities, said Green Lantern. Some countries do have the death penalty, said Flash. Raiden suggested that we do it, said Adam. We do not kill, replied Superman, firmly. Killing is an addiction, spoke Martian Manhunter. If we start killing villains with our own hands, it will become addicting. Eventually, we will try to find reasons to kill villains, instead of judging them based on their actions, replied Batman. Well, let's discuss this later, but I do think we should consider adding some sort of way to take down villains permanently. If not, one day, Someone will be crazy enough to destroy a city and kill thousands, said Aquaman. Two weeks later. Raiden was sitting on a rooftop, he was currently in his servant form, specifically the Archer-class servant Arash. Looks like things are going smoothly, Master. Yes, it's pretty straightforward. We won't need to interfere. Raiden was watching the team take on a group of a terrorist organization in Croatia, he, of course, followed them, even though he is not allowed, just to check on them. Access Raiden B10. You are late, said Dinah. Raiden looked at her then went directly to the counseling room. He didn't want to have the energy to speak with her, but he obliged nonetheless. Dinah sat on her seat then said, So, how was your little trip to the outside? Pretty fine, said Raiden in a monotone way. Raiden. This is our third session together, you have to start saying something. Like what exactly I don't like being here, I don't want to be here, and I don't like the attitude you take with me, replied Raiden with bitterness. What exactly changed you weren't like this before? Was it the battle with Ares Dinah tried to come to a reason for what changed and why his attitude was suddenly aggressive and unsupportive of the League? You don't get it, do you I haven't changed, Miss Dinah. I haven't changed one bit. I was merely suppressing myself, trying to observe you all to come to a conclusion. I wanted to believe in your justice, but
but I haven't found my peace with it. It's suffocating in here, how you all act so graciously and heroically when, in fact, you are all the cause of many crimes, spoke Raiden in rage. Raiden, have you ever tried to consider our position we are heroes, yes, but we are all also normal people. We have lives and families to care for. We can't bear to kill anyone, the responsibilities of such an act are too big, said Dinah. If it's that big, then why did you step up for it is your courage, strength, and resolve as heroes limited, hell, if it's too big for you, then don't interfere when others do it. We're simply repeating the same thing here, Raiden. The world isn't so black and white, explained Dinah. No, it's not. But sometimes, it's better to see it that way, said Raiden. Can we talk about your time as a prisoner asked Dinah. Raiden immediately got up and started leaving as he said, Your time's up, Miss Dinah. You can't avoid it forever, Raiden. You have to open yourself to me so I can help you. Chapter 25, The Calm Perched atop a rooftop in Coast City, Raiden observed the sunset as his mind wandered through thoughts and ideas. It's beautiful, a voice spoke behind him. What the sunset I guess so, Raiden replied, turning his eyes to the person who spoke. His gaze locked with hers as he smiled. It's good to see you again, Raven, Raiden spoke. Raven sat beside Raiden, saying, someone had to check up on you. Guess I had to do it as the newbie. Did you have to do it as the newbie or because you were genuinely worried about me asked Raiden. Hmm, maybe both spoke Raven. Raiden smiled, saying, so. Two missions already, huh you're becoming an integral part of the team. Yeah, it has been. Fun, said Raven. Not as fun without me, huh joked Raiden. Yeah. Not expecting Raven to say that, Raiden was taken aback. He looked up and said, I. I am sorry. I should have been more considerate of you. I forced you into this team but didn't spend time with you as I should. Instead, I did something reckless and almost got myself kicked out of the league. Even worse, I could have been killed. I don't blame you, though. I think what you did was the right thing, Raiden. You saved that little girl's life. I still don't know what a hero really is, but I know one thing for sure, it's that I trust you and your judgment. I believe in you, Raiden. You saved my life and freed me from a prison that I put myself in. I owe my life to you. Hearing her words, Raiden's heart tightened, and he couldn't resist himself any longer. Raiden immediately closed the distance between their faces, locking lips with her. The kiss was tame, average at best, but its emotional significance was important for both of them. That was. My first kiss, said Raven. Me too, replied Raiden. Both of them smiled as Raiden said, you didn't hate it? No, not really. Still, though. Very unexpected. Raiden smiled again as he stared at the last bits of the sun going down. He turned to Raven and said, Hey, would you come with me if I decided to go far away, leave the league, the team, everyone, and go somewhere that is different, away from this life, would you come with me, Raven? Raven considered his words carefully as he spoke them, but she didn't answer. Instead, she grabbed his hand and placed it on her cheek. She took a few seconds before she finally answered, saying, I don't know what this feeling truly is, but I know one thing to be true, it's the fact that I want to be with you, no matter the where, when, or how. Raiden smiled and said, thank you. I have no plans for now, but I truly want to leave the league, the team. I want to journey somewhere far away, discover myself, who I am, what I should do, what my place in this world is, what my power means. All those questions, I believe I will answer them if I leave. Raven turned to the sky as well, saying, Me too, I want to find my inner self, and as I said before, I believe I can do that with you. Good, that's good. Thanks, Raven, for being here with me. Over the following couple of weeks, Raiden's sessions with Dinah increased, along with his training. Since he had free time, he managed to connect with many other servants. His skills in martial arts improved, his knowledge of magic increased, and his plan to leave started to solidify. Two months later, Raiden and Raven were enjoying a pleasant dinner at an upscale restaurant. This is a bit challenging, 
Isn't it Raiden remarked as he attempted to cut his steak with a knife and fork. You're embarrassing us, Raven teased, gracefully placing a bite of steak in her mouth. I can sense traces of magic in that fork. It seems you're not familiar with dining in such a fancy place either, Raiden playfully exposed Raven. She blushed a bit but pretended as if he had said nothing. Robin's recommendations are always a bit extravagant. Anyway, about the mission tomorrow, I hear it's a tough one, Raiden expressed his concern for his girlfriend Raven. Though their relationship had progressed slowly with only two kisses exchanged, he felt comfortable calling her his girlfriend. Yeah, somewhat. I'm not sure how difficult it is, but according to Calder, we're infiltrating a genetic testing site, likely owned by the light, Raven explained. Mentioning a genetic testing site triggered memories of Raiden's old location, but he shook them off. This might be your last mission with the team. Make sure to stay safe. After this, we leave, Raiden advised. Hearing this, Raven nodded, saying, I'm ready. Access, Raiden B10. Access, Raven B11. The couple entered the headquarters together, finding their friends waiting for them. Raiden's relationship with the team remained unchanged after his suspension, but there were noticeable cracks between him and Calder and, to some extent, Robin. Here come the lovebirds. Zaytna exclaimed. You two fit well together. Megan added. Looks like you finally found a girl worthy of you, Raiden. Or perhaps you're the worthy one here, Artemis teased. Haha, <laughs> okay, whatever, guys. Very funny, Raiden responded in annoyance. Raven blushed, saying, we're still not a thing. Yet. Keyword yet, dear Raven. Pretty soon, you'll be as inseparable as Connor and Megan, Rocket observed. Of course, all of this is credited to my love advice. Isn't that right, Raiden Wally chimed in. Had I followed your advice, I would have found myself on some registry somewhere. I don't even know how you got Artemis to like you. Maybe she's a creep like you, Raiden retorted. What? Hey. No, I'm different. Artemis protested in shock. So, two weeks left, Hasun, you'll be back on the team, Robin mentioned. Yeah, Raiden replied dismissively. Guys, I want to thank you for welcoming me as a member of this team. I don't think I had the chance to say this. I learned a lot from all of you, and I'm proud to call myself your friend. Raiden dropped a bombshell of a confession to his friends, his way of saying goodbye without revealing his plans to leave. Where is that coming from you know we're happy to have you with us, Raiden, Connor assured. Yeah. You're a great friend to have, and you've saved us many times. We should be thanking you, Megan added. We have differences, but beneath all that, I see you as a friend, Raiden. And I'm happy to have you on our team, Calder spoke, the leader of the team. So, another session today, Hadina inquired. Yeah, looks like it, Raiden replied. I want you to know that I'm happy. You're showing great progress, Dinah acknowledged. Raiden had decided to stop aggravating her and engaging in debates about his opinions. Once he decided to leave, he chose to go with the flow until his departure. Miss Dinah, I want you to know that I'm happy you're going through so much to help me, train me, and be here. As a hero, this must be time-consuming for you. So, I thank you for that, Raiden expressed his gratitude. Don't worry about it. I take it as part of my job here. Besides, Raiden, you interest me greatly. Talking to you is always fun. System, show me my bond list. Bond list. Heracles, bond level 3. Ushiwakamaru, bond level 1. Robin Hood. Bond level 2. Mata Hari, Bond level 1. Hundred Faces Hassan, Bond level 2. Paracelsus von Hohenheim, Bond level 3. Media, Bond level 4. Merlin, Bond level 5. Skathic, Bond level 3. Mordred, Bond level 2. Rama, Bond level 2. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Bond level 1. Arash, Bond level 3. The list is getting bigger. If I can acquire more skills through these bonds, I'll be able to transform for far longer. Well, it matters not now. I'll have to prepare for tomorrow. 
With his goodbyes in order, all Raiden had to do now was await the completion of the team's mission and then pick up Raven to leave. Chapter 26, November 27, 2011 November 27, 2011 The mission is clear and simple. We infiltrate, destroy confiscate any essential equipment, and take down any scientist working in this facility. Due to the nature of the facility, expect heavy defenses, and we might have to face many super powerful people, explained Calder. The entire team entered serious mode as the mission was now greenlit. Everyone had a role in this mission, and they were all grouped into three teams of three, Team A, Raven, Megan, Artemis. Mission Location, Top Floor. Team B, Rocket, Zaytna, Robin. Mission Location, Middle Floor. Team C, Connor, Calder, Wally. Mission Location, Basement. Raiden, as usual, stayed far away from the mission location but ensured to observe it, making sure everything went well. This mission was delicate and sensitive, so he stayed at a considerable distance. With Raiden not being with them, using Megan's mind telekinesis was possible. It took time to get Raven used to it, but it was not a problem like Raiden. As such, the team used that to communicate. Team, locations asked Calder. Team A has just entered the top floor, said Artemis. We're on the middle floor as well, said Robin. Good, just as we planned. To wear our enemies thin, we attack simultaneously, spoke Calder. Make sure to try and get all our targets first. According to Batman, the chances of this being a completely secret mission are near impossible, so expect resistance heavy. Now, good luck everyone, he added. And with that, the mission started. Alright, let's get to it. Our objective is to destroy the pods that they use to genetically modify people. Second objective, collect all data possible or destroy it, said Artemis. Okay, let me map the layout of this floor, spoke Raven. Using her dark magic, she collected data on the entire floor. There's a metagene user on this floor. Looks like they have him as a guard, spoke Raven. Did you locate the pods asked Megan. Yes, replied Raven. Okay, let's enter that room secretly. Then Raven will destroy them, while Megan and I keep guard, spoke Artemis. The three girls then started their mission. Raven and Megan easily knocked out all the scientists in the room silently, ensuring that their mission went smoothly. Artemis placed a hacking device on their computers, while Raven started crushing the pods one by one. Some had people in them, but mostly disfigured and failed test subjects. She made sure to give them a merciful death, as it was clear they were too far gone. We. It's the alarm. Spoke Megan. Did you guys do anything asked Artemis. No replied Raven. Nothing. We've been completely stealthy about this. Must be the others then. One of the teams failed to stay stealthy. Get ready, there will be many attacks coming through that door. Megan and I will take care of them. Feel free to join us once you're done, Raven, said Artemis. Few minutes earlier, okay, those are our targets. Spoke Rocket. Dr. Stevenson, Dr. Richards, and Dr. Miller all of them are to be arrested. We need to be secretive, though. One wrong move, and this whole room will be filled with guards, affirmed Robin. Okay, let me handle this, said Zaytna as she grabbed the rope from Robin and said, Nertzer at your heights rotkod. The rope, in a super fast manner, flew through the room and restrained all three doctors, pushing their backs to each other. Before the guards in the room could react, they were met with three smoke balls to the face, courtesy of Robin. The gas was sleep gas, so they immediately fell asleep. Rocket then created an energy ball around the three doctors, just to be sure. We. I didn't do anything. Screamed Rocket. The alarm, spoke Zaytna in shock, as she turned to Robin, who spoke. It must be one of the others. Swish. 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 And we're done here said Wally as he darted through the room, taking down all the guards. We're still not done here, Wally. Behind this vault is this facility's most important secret, spoke Calder. And we're here to destroy it, right said Connor. Yes, but we must be careful, 
said Calder. Yes, yes, we know. Batman said that they will put their strongest guards in this place, spoke Wally. Is that why we are here because we are the strongest? asked Connor. No, we're here because we have a role here, Connor. Let's stick to it, please. Now, will you do the honors? said Calder. Are you sure this will probably raise the alarms? said Connor. I have confidence that the others are already done with their missions, replied Calder. He has come to learn that his team is pretty strong, as such, it's better to trust them than to doubt them. All right, said Connor as he looked at the large massive vault door. It was one of those doors that can only be unlocked through eye scan, handprints, and multiple passwords. But all that didn't matter when facing Superboy. With a stronger punch, the door was sent flying down the room as the three entered. Then in front of them, there was a pod, larger than normal, very large, filled with green liquid. The pod opened up, the liquid was spilled on the ground, and steam was released from inside the pod. A gigantic monstrosity looked at them, its green eyes glowed as it screamed. Ah! Wally looked at the scene then said, We're screwed. Intruders. Kill them. Many guards entered the top floor pod area, their sole intention to kill the intruders. Artemis released multiple arrows towards their chests, electrifying them. The guards started shooting at the three girls, but it was all for naught, as Megan kept the bullets at bay. That's the last of them, said Raven as she used her dark magic to crush the last pod. She then turned around towards the entrance and said, let me help you with that. The entire platoon was shocked when multiple dark tentacles attacked them from the ground, knocking them out. A-G-H-H, screamed Raven as she took back her dark magic, which was an extension of herself. What's wrong, Raven asked Megan. The meta-human, he's here, replied Raven. Standing atop the fallen guards, one man had a menacing look in his eyes. He was wearing a red suit compared to the dark ones worn by the guards. Careful, guys, his power is related to fire, said Raven. Yeah, well, I've got a solution for that said Artemis. She pulled out one of her special arrows and launched it towards the red guard. The arrow exploded in white foam, the same foam used in fire extinguishers. Now what will you do smirked Artemis. Artemis, watch out, said Megan as she pushed her away using a strong force of telekinesis. Then from exactly under her, a huge hole opened up with a wave of lava gushing out from it. It's lava. That's his power. Mere fire extinguisher foam isn't going to be enough to stop it. It also looks like it's a long-ranged attack, said Megan. Look at him, said Raven. The team looked at the red guard, who had his hand on the ground. It looks like that might be his weakness, said Raven. Okay, if we can hit him from close range, we can beat him. Raven, you're on the attack. Megan and I will distract him, said Artemis. The three girls attacked. Megan took flight, fully avoiding his attacks. Although the lava could reach far high, it was very slow. Meanwhile, Artemis was dodging it by foot, jumping from a place to a place, avoiding the lava eruptions right before they struck. This was, of course, a coordinated plan by the three girls to distract the Red Guard so that Raven could attack. Right on point, Raven summoned the Dark Raven right behind him, attacking his blind spot, his back. They realized that the lava user was forced to use both his hands to create lava, so his blind spot would be his back. By forcing him to attack the other two, Raven took advantage of the chance created and took him out. Just as the girls were about to celebrate their victory, a message was heard in their general communication radio, Team C, Calder here. We need support. Everyone forget what you are doing and come to the basement. We found the enemy's main experiments. It's. We need support immediately. Behind you, Robin. Screamed Zaytana as someone emerged from Robin's back. The person attempted to stab him, but it was avoided by Robin after hearing the warning, narrowly. What the hell was that screamed rocket? I'm not sure, it might be some meta-human, so be careful, said Robin. It can probably teleport, so watch out, said Zaytana. Come inside my energy bubble. We can restrain him if he teleports inside it, said Rocket as she created a large energy bubble enough to shield all three of them. The team tightened together, protecting their blind spots, 
awaiting an attack, believing that they were safe inside the energy bubble, they relaxed a bit, and that's when he attacked, emerging from exactly behind Rocket. The man stabbed her in the back, but couldn't go very deep because right before he stabbed her, Robin delivered a kick to his face. Ack! Screamed Rocket. Rocket! Are you okay? L-A-E-H rat, said Zaytna as she tried to heal her using magic. The figure disappeared again, into the ground, something that both Zaytna and Robin didn't fail to notice. Zaytna, said Robin. Yeah, I understand, nodded Zaytna, preparing for her spell. The two played the long game, awaiting for the person to attack, and rightly so, he did, emerging right behind Robin. But to his surprise, Zaytna released a special spell that locked him in place. A Tirkth kill said Zaytna as a massive ball of light was created above Robin, destroying his shadow. Then right after, she said, Alpha Tau Lambda Alpha. The man froze, unable to teleport and unable to move. After I hit you, I knew you would attack me next. You wanted revenge, but your downfall was revealing your true power, teleporting into other people's shadows. But without the shadow, and you restrained like that, there will be no escape, said Robin with a smirk on his face as he looked at the frightened shadow teleporter. Robin gave him quite the thrashing, making sure to beat the daylights out of him, as revenge for injuring Rocket. Team C, Calder here, we need support. Everyone forget what you are doing and come to the basement. We found the enemy's main experiments. It's... We need support immediately. Few minutes earlier. We're screwed, said Wally as he looked in shock at the thing that was getting revived. This can't be possible. Superman killed this thing, he destroyed it. Said Calder. What is this thing asked Connor. But the answer didn't come from Wally or Calder, instead, it was the voice of a doctor, a doctor that if Raiden were here, he would rage in an attempt to kill him. Dr. Evo. Shaklerith. That is its original name, in its home world, the sin of Krypton. After reading many lost books about Krypton, I understand this entity. You see, most predators attack their attackers. But this beast. It destroyed everything. That was its function, after all. To ensure that no Kryptonian would ever be safe again, spoke Evo about the creature. He then added, and now, you bring to it, a half-Kryptonian being. You have given him the chance to kill again, continued Evo as he smiled and said, Dear children, your death won't be quick, after all, you are facing. Doomsday. Chapter 27, Doomsday. Team C, Calder here. We need support. Everyone, forget what you're doing and come to the basement. We've found the enemy's main experiments, it's doomsday. We need support immediately. Escaping is our main priority. Connor, no. Screamed Calder, warning Connor who decided to launch himself at doomsday. Connor attempted to punch it, the punch landed, but for the first time in his life, Connor realized that he might not be as strong as he thinks. Doomsday didn't even flinch, instead, he grabbed Connor by the face and smashed him on the ground. With excruciating pain running through his body, Connor couldn't dodge the punch coming from Doomsday. Lucky for him, he wasn't alone. Calder used his water to splash Doomsday's eyes, and Wally quickly carried him away in super speed. Doomsday screamed as he placed his hands between his face and the water, then grabbed a piece of debris with his other hand and threw it towards Calder. The debris almost hit Calder, but once again, Wally came to the rescue, saving Calder from a life-threatening injury. Doomsday turned towards the fallen Connor, who had been placed far away in the vault by Wally, and dashed towards him. For Doomsday, the goal was to end all Kryptonians, the other beings were simply a nuisance he had to deal with later. He attacked Connor again, but for the third time, Wally intervened, placing him on the top of his to get rid of list. Doomsday followed Wally's movement with his eyes before dashing in a speed that shocked Wally. Holy shit, he's fast. Doomsday appeared right behind him, grabbed the running Wally from his leg, and, using one hand, broke it like a twig. Ah! <sighs> Screamed Wally in pain. Doomsday wasn't done, he wanted to kill him then and there. However, Connor finally managed to get over his pain. He jumped on Doomsday's back and grabbed him by the neck, choking him. 
This stopped Doom's day for a few seconds, allowing Calder to push Wally away with water to save his life. Doomsday placed his hand on his back and finally got hold of Connor, throwing him on the ground. Doomsday's blade-like hands were about to pierce his heart, but before he could kill him, some invisible force stopped him. Connor! Screamed the voice belonging to the invisible force. Doomsday turned to see the owner of the voice. As he pushed his hand further, the girl, Megan, kept pushing him to stop. She arrived earlier because she had sensed something bad was about to happen and managed to save her love using her telekinesis. But it almost didn't matter, his hand sank deeper and deeper, almost taunting her. Her nose started bleeding, and so were her eyes, but she pushed him away. Doomsday and her were now in a deadlock, but her health was waning bit by bit. Calder jumped on Doomsday's back, stabbing him over and over, but it was like stabbing a mountain. They both had no way to injure Doomsday. Megan's body was giving up as Doomsday's hand sank further and further, getting close to killing the passed out Connor. But before she could give up, a black raven was summoned from under Doomsday. The raven pushed with telekinesis, this time, Doomsday was the one being pushed away. Connor was immediately covered with a blue energy bubble as well. Doomsday now had no way to kill Connor without getting rid of the others. But before he could execute that idea, Three arrows pierced his face and exploded, a wire wrapped around his legs, electrifying him as well, and to add to the barrage of attacks, Zaytna said, Alpha Epsilon Rho Omicron Kappa Epsilon Rho Alpha Iota Nu Omicron. The whirlwind of electricity ran throughout Doomsday. However, it didn't matter. No matter how much they attacked, it almost didn't matter. After all, Doomsday was a tool made to destroy the Kryptonians, one of the strongest races in the entire universe. Ah! <sighs> Screamed Doomsday as he went on the attack, pushing away all the arrows coming his way as he darted towards Calder, punching him away. He turned to Raven and Zaytna. He attacked the duo, but he was stopped by an energy bubble. Two, three hits, it broke. His body was wrapped by Raven's dark magic as Zaytna bombarded him with fire spells. But Doomsday didn't care. He grabbed hold of Raven's dark magical raven and ripped it apart then turned to Zaytna. He was about to punch her, but Robin arrived, throwing smoke grenades as he picked her up and escaped. With one swing of his hand, Doomsday removed all the smoke as he looked at his opponents, choosing his next targets. Robin looked at his team and started thinking of strategies for running away with the members alive. But no matter what, he couldn't come up with a strategy where he could save everyone. He had already sent a message to the Justice League and Batman, but he knew the support wouldn't be fast enough to save them. Wally's legs are broken, Calder and Megan both passed out, Zaytna used too many advanced magic, and she's almost done for. The same for Raven, who had her main attack force destroyed. Artemis and I can't fight him head on. Connor is hanging on but stands no chance. Rocket's bubbles can't protect us for more than two hits. There's no way to save everyone, thought Robin. Doomsday. Seeing how the weaklings had given up, turned his back to them as he moved towards the half Kryptonian. Connor was still holding on. He sat up and looked around, realizing the situation very well. So, he said, just leave everyone. I'll hold him for as long as I can, but please run away. Connor. Said Robin, but he knew there was nothing he or anyone could do. Swish. A massive dark figure passed in front of him his eyes could barely keep up. Before he could turn his head, Robin only heard a single sound. Ah! He finally turned his head towards the voice, and there stood a bronze-skinned titan, a monstrosity equal to that of Doomsday. He was wearing some sort of armor with the head of a lion in its front and holding a massive golden round axe. He had seen this beast before somewhere, he tried to remember. Yes, it's him. Raiden. Raven looked in front of her to watch as well. She looked at the monster, then at Robin and said, Is that him? Yes. I'm sure of it. That's the monster that defeated Amazo, Heracles. The Greek hero. It can only be Raiden. Raiden had arrived, he had been observing everything from a faraway place and noticed how the team had decided to all go to the basement, so he decided to transform immediately and check it out. Doomsday got out of the crater that he had created when Raiden attacked him and then jumped towards him. In Heracles' body, 
Raiden knew that he could fight this monster. He grabbed his axe and clashed it with Doomsday's fists. Of course, Doomsday wasn't cut by it, his skin was too tough. But it didn't matter, as Raiden moved left to lead the falling Doomsday into a trap and kicked him in the guts. He then used his axe to strike him in the back of the head and smashed it over and over again. Doomsday didn't take this as he used his leg to strike Raiden and placed him on one knee. He then turned his body and surprised Raiden with a strong eye laser right to his face. Doomsday got up as he kept blasting the laser in Raiden's face, burning half of it away. But after a few more seconds, Raiden threw his axe as he raised his hands and guarded his face with them. He then pushed one of them into Doomsday's face, stopping the laser blast. He then punched him in the face, and Doomsday punched back. The two giants exchanged blows over and over again, with Raiden clearly coming out on top. Unlike Doomsday, Raiden was in the body of an actual warrior with battle experience, so he knew where to punch and how to dodge, while Doomsday was a monster that didn't think, relying only on instinct. With one more blow, Doomsday fell on his back, almost passed out. Raiden went back to grab his round axe, his intention was to kill Doomsday. But then suddenly, something bright flashed, a yellow beam of some sort. And there stood Raiden, his chest had a large hole, his eyes opened wide as he looked to see the man that had shot him. This was made to assassinate Superman himself, a beam powerful enough to destroy a city, condensed into a small beam. It only has two charges and will take a long while to recharge it, but killing you is worth it, said a man wearing an odd armor, primarily black and gray, with goldenrod greaves and gauntlets. He wore a matching goldenrod mask with a black area that obscured the right half of his face. The man, known to the Justice League as Deathstroke, surprised Raiden. Raiden. No, screamed Raven. Oh God. Raiden, said Artemis. Raiden, cried out Zaytana. Slay Ayod. Damn you. Why are you here screamed Robin. The man in question took his helmet off as he looked at Robin with a smile and said, why, to fulfill my job, of course. The light knew of this attack, this is why they had Doomsday guard it. But it was obvious that his weakened Doomsday wouldn't be able to defeat the new monster, the monster that I was sent to slay, Raiden Kagawa. He then walked on top of Raiden's body, he got up close to the hole he created and said, looks like even monsters can die. What a shame I would ha. Huh? Uh, what is going on? He wasn't the only one shocked, as Raiden's body started glowing red. The hole in his body reattached itself with some weird red tentacles, as his eyes opened, full of red energy. Raiden got up to see the shocked face of Deathstroke, who jumped away as soon as he saw the red energy. I was told to only use one charge to kill the kid, but fuck this. I'll have to use the other one. What's five more years to the light anyway thought Slade, as he prepared another charge, fully ready to blast Raiden again. Boom. Slade watched in horror as his attack did nothing. It was like he shot Superman with a bullet. Did they lie this had only one charge and the other is blank? But before he could continue his thoughts, Raiden dashed towards him and grabbed him by the leg, smashing him left and right, then right and left, before he looked at Slade and said, Puny assassin. And threw him away. Raiden was surprised a bit, but unfortunately, it was time. His body started reverting back to normal, most likely due to the energy that was used to regenerate. He then immediately heard the notification in his mind. Bond increased. Heracles Bond 3 Rightward Arrow Bond 5. Host can choose an active skill, Valor A+. Battle Continuation A Minds I Fake B. Raiden thought for a bit before picking his most desired one, an ability that will allow him to survive longer. Battle Continuation is a skill that allows for the continuation of combat after sustaining mortal wounds. It will also reduce the mortality rate from injury. This skill represents the ability to survive and or the mentality of one who doesn't know when to give up, consisting of one's strength of vitality in predicaments. The best result is achieved when a resilient body is combined with this skill. After picking his skills, Raiden looked around. The passed out doomsday could be a major problem if he wakes up, so he decided to help the others escape. But before he could, someone jumped onto him. Raiden. Screamed Raven as she hugged him. I thought you had died. Don't scare me like that. Raiden patted her back before saying, 
Sorry, I didn't mean to. Raiden. You are alive. How said Robin? Heracle's power, immortality, said Raiden. Of course, he glossed over the fact that Heracles can be revived twelve times and that he gains immunity to whatever killed him. The attack by Slade took out eight of his lives, since strong attacks take more lives than normal. I love my mind. Screamed a voice that was sitting close to Doomsday's passed out body. Raiden looked towards it, and his eyes turned red. Rage filled him, as anger took over. The only thing that ran through his mind was kill kill kill. There, in front of him, sat Evo, the man he wanted to kill, the man he needed to kill, to free himself of all his sins. He needed to die. Ivo Chapter 28, Incarnation of Vengeance Oh hello, dear child. Raiden. My Raiden. I missed you, my dear. Oh, not a single day went by without me remembering our good times together. Of course, I hope you missed me too, dear child. Spoke Evo as he mocked the enraged Raiden. Rage filled Raiden as he jumped towards Evo's location, his body was enhanced through magic. Since the cooldown for his power had just started, his only means of fighting was his normal body skills and the magic he learned from his brief time with Media. No Raiden, it's a trap. Screamed Robin. Midway, Raiden felt pain in his chest as a robot kicked him in the skies, sending him flying back to his original spot. Raiden looked to see Amazo in front of him. Raiden looked at it and then said, Alpha tell Lambda Alpha, using the spell to freeze the robot in place as he attacked Evo. Access Martian Manhunter, Amazo sank deep into the ground as he emerged from another location, pinning Raiden to the ground after grabbing him midway and smashing him face first onto the ground. Alpha Epsilon Rho Omicron Kappa Epsilon Rho Alpha Iota Nu Omicron, Fireball, Fire Blast, Lightning Bolt, Magic Enhancement shouted Raiden as he used every spell he could think of to get rid of Amazo's pin. But the robot didn't care, allowing most of the attacks to pass through him or ignoring them altogether because they didn't affect him. Evo walked towards Raiden, putting his leg on top of Raiden's head, and spoke, You're a bit excited to meet me, eh oh, my dear child. You think it was only you that wants revenge. You imbecile. You absolute trash. Smashing Raiden's face with his leg with every word. Leave him alone. Screamed Raven as her magic attacked Evo, but it was defended by Amazo. Robin threw multiple smoke bombs on the ground as Artemis released explosive arrows. While Rocket protected Raiden with her bubble, Akamneti R. Elbizivni screamed Zatanna as she tried to make Raiden invisible, hiding him from Amazo and Evo. Amazo grabbed Evo and jumped away, dodging the explosions before turning to the team. Access Superman, Amazo looked at Zatanna, and in super speed, he flew towards her, punching her away. Rocket's bubble barrier protected her, so she managed to survive but passed out immediately. Amazo looked at Rocket and released a massive laser blast towards her. She used her shield, but it didn't last much as it exploded. The laser hit her right in the chest, almost killing her if not for Raven creating a magic shield around her at the last minute. Access Adam, Amazo raised his hand, blasting Raven with an energy blast, blowing both her and Rocket away. Access Martian Manhunter, said Adam as multiple arrows passed through him. Awaiting that moment, Robin attacked, throwing his now extended staff towards Evo as he transformed back. It worked before, so why not now but to his shock, the staff stopped midway, as another entity grabbed it. Robin's face darkened, as did Artemis. Doomsday has awakened again, using his hand, he crushed the staff and screamed, Ah! Ahaha welcome back, my dear. Now, grab everyone, but don't kill them, said Evo. Doomsday darted towards the remaining two, knocking them out and collecting everyone, including Connor. Raiden got up and tried to fight again, but now, up against both Amazo and Doomsday, his chances were not. Amazo placed his knees on Raiden's back, grabbed his head, and forced it up, making him look at Evo. Evo walked towards Raiden and spoke, my position in the light was jeopardized because of you. I had to make a new Amazo. But it wasn't all bad. Ha 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 ha, look at it, pointed Evo towards Doomsday. You see this? This is a product of your work. After five years of studying your immortality and trying to control it, I hadn't realized, 
but I was able to control other creatures. You were an exception, but it's okay. Although it came at the cost of lowering its power significantly, I now control both these monsters. The light won't be able to ignore me anymore, added Evo. He then turned to Doomsday, who was carrying Raven, about to place her with the others as ordered. No, not that one. Bring her here, that one is special to him. No, you bastard, leave her alone. I will rip you apart, I will destroy you, Evo, said Raiden in a fit of rage. Ha 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 look at this. This is it. I finally got to hear it. Face to face, you see, you used to scream like this as well in my lab. But, of course, you had no voice, it was your eyes that did the talking. I love it. People like you, you are so emotional, I love that, it's so easy to manipulate. She's your weakness, isn't she a lover perhaps meh, doesn't matter, I know you would scream like this for all of them, spoke Evo. I will kill you, struggled Raiden as he tried to move his body, multiple times, trying his best to summon a servant, but failing because of the cooldown. You're kind of person, it's my favorite. You remember our good time together the people I killed, you suffered each time one died. Logically speaking, you are at no fault, I mean, I did the killings, but you're kind, ah ha ha they blame themselves, crying out, saying that they failed. It's so predictable and easy to manipulate. I mean, I'm sure that you'll probably survive this, you're immortal after all. But you will never be the same, you will remember my face forever, the face of the man that killed all your friends, as you watched, continued to taunt Evo as he grabbed a knife and placed it on Raven's face, slowly cutting her cheek. Ah, fuck you leave her alone, you piece of shit no oh, leave her, struggled Raiden over and over again. Evo looked at him and said, make me. Raiden shouted and shouted, but it didn't matter. To the point that he passed out. Oh what is this, he passed out he held out strong before, you can't tell me he passed out because I was about to torture his love, that's no fun, said Evo, as he dropped the bloodied knife and went to Raiden. He grabbed his face and slapped it. Wake up. Wake up, damn it. Raiden opened his eyes, but something was different, his eyes glowed golden, and his face bore no expression, almost as if he were emotionless. What is this said Evo? But immediately, Amazo carried him away, and after that, Raiden's body exploded, creating a crater of smoke. In its place, something else was there. A monster was the wrong expression, the devil was close, but it wasn't accurate. No, it was something much darker, something that knew no fear. It was a man, a man determined to reach his goal, to achieve vengeance. He was called the Avenger class servant, the Count of Monte Cristo. 11100111 Error Summoning System Error Unable to block the summoning. Avenger class servant, Edmund Dantes summoned. If you say you are my master, then at least show me something. Show me the revenge that you seek, spoke the servant, Edmund. Raiden heard many things in his mind about the system's notifications, but the only words he paid attention to were Edmund's. I will, I will kill him. What is your name? I am the Count of Monte Cristo. I am not the Edmund who struggled with revenge and was saved by regret and reform. I am the notorious incarnation of vengeance, the Avenger, spoke Edmund. Then I will be the same, said Raiden. He then closed his eyes as he started to feel his first noble phantasm, Monte Cristo mythology. The noble phantasm was a special type, the way of life of Edmund Dantes, acting as the incarnation of revenge, sublimated into a noble phantasm through his manifestation as an Avenger. As he did not fit under any other class, his body that manifested as Avenger was converted into a noble phantasm. His body shined with electricity running through it, he was wearing a dark green suit, with a massive coat and a large hat. His eyes shone with golden light. I've never felt this good. I feel complete, said Raiden as he used his speed to appear behind Doomsday. The latter turned to attack, but all he received was a hand shooting a massive blue beam that ripped apart his entire left shoulder area. Doomsday jumped backward as a laser beam attacked Raiden, but he merely dodged it. He effortlessly avoided all Amazo's attacks. Amazo activated Black Canary sound powers, Superman's strength, Adam's beams, Flash's speed, and Manhunter's matter manipulation, 
but no matter what, Raiden dodged them all, hitting the robot with a strong beam, pushing it to its master's legs. From behind, Doomsday struck, but Raiden met him with his guard. The monster tried to punch him multiple times, but Raiden predicted all of them and punched them back. After hundreds of blows dealt in less than 20 seconds, it was no surprise that Doomsday's hands gave out. Every punch dealt by Raiden was filled with the power of vengeance, something that fueled Edmund greatly. He charged it up and released it, creating a massive hole in Doomsday's body, connected to its shoulder. Doomsday was killed. Raiden turned to see Amazo, he was surprised that the robot didn't take the chance to attack him, and he finally realized why. Amazo had run away with its creator, Evo managed to escape Raiden's grasp once again. The man he transformed into the incarnation of vengeance to kill had escaped. As if. I don't need any mercy. My path goes beyond love and hate. And for Chateau d'If. The noble phantasm and for Chateau d'If was a representation of Edmund's prison, his ability to escape everything, even time and space. Seeing his revenge as a prison, Raiden was able to escape from it, reverting time to the spot where Evo was and getting him back. What, what are we doing back here? Error, replied Amazo as the robot looked above it. There were tens of Raiden Dantes flying, charging their revenge blast, and then it was released, creating a massive blue ball of energy, destroying Amazo and injuring Evo. What are you to associate with me so much, it's just like... No, you are not like Haiti. You are you. Master, spoke Edmund. Raiden walked toward the area Evo was in, he was crawling away, having lost a leg and an eye. Amazo clearly protected him, but it wasn't enough. So, this is your revenge, ha oh well, then kill me. My vengeance will be the hatred directed at you by your friends when you finally do it. Robin was awake, he had awakened shortly after Raiden turned into Edmund Dantes. He looked at Raiden and said, Raiden, please. If you do this, there will be no return. Calder, who had also gained consciousness, spoke, Raiden, revenge isn't the answer. You'll regret this in the long run. Please, don't kill. Raiden turned his head to his friends and said, Do you not understand I am made of grudges, vengeance, and poisonous flames that bring death to whoever touches them? I am prepared for the consequences. Raiden walked toward Evo, grabbed him by the neck, and raised him up. Then and there, he stabbed his heart with his hand, taking it out and crushing it. Uh, you did it, cough cough I'm proud of you. Now you'll die with your friends, said Evo. As he looked at Evo's hand, the secret of this lab was revealed, a massive explosion occurred, as a huge gate emerged. Shit, said Raiden. He tried to save everyone, but he knew he couldn't. This thing was sucking everything at a faster rate than he could get them out. He looked at Raven, then turned to Robin and said, Tell her that I love her and that I will come back, no matter what. He dashed toward the gate, using his power to break it. Using his blast, he managed to do just that, at the cost of being sucked into it. Raiden, no, screamed Robin as he watched him sink deep into the gate. Then he disappeared with it, stopping. Where is that thing going? Artemis, who had recovered, said, the files we collected said something about the Phantom Zone. Chapter 29, A New Journey Error registered. The fate system has been compromised, attempting to shut down. A robotic female voice resonated in a white void, the sound emanating from an entity that lacked form. In its attempt to shut down the systems, another voice commanded, Do not shut it down, allow it. The voice belonged to another female, but it was clearer and more stern, exuding an aura of wisdom and charisma. Mother. Understood, responded the robotic voice. Don't worry, my child. I understand that you are confused as to why I would order you to stop, spoke the older voice. Yes, mother. According to the rules, this system should be shut down and erased, replied the robotic voice. Indeed, but that was meant to prevent people from using external means to break the system. This system was broken from the inside, by its own user's willpower, explained the older voice. I don't see how this is different. The system was broken, regardless of the means, replied the robotic voice, confused. The whole reason I made these systems was so they could be broken, but not from the outside. Rather, 
from the inside, by the user's willpower. This system shouldn't be shut down, instead, it should be monitored further and studied. The future of the world is at stake. What do you mean you can't save him? Screamed Raven, looking towards Batman. The gate is unstable. Opening it now will only suck us inside of it. The Phantom Zone is a very dangerous place, and opening it from the inside is pretty much impossible, replied Batman. Let me go after him, just me. You can close it afterwards. Replied Raven, appealing to Batman to reconsider his decision not to open the gate again. No, I can't risk your life too. Said Batman. Then you're just going to give up on him. After all he's done. He has saved all our lives. Screamed Raven at Batman. He killed a man. He is a murderer now. He's committed a crime. He's not even a hero anymore, screamed Superman back, clearly angry. He was very enraged to find out Doomsday was alive and wasn't in a good mood. He's more of a hero than all of you. Replied Raven with bitterness in her mouth. Angered, she walked away. Megan tried to stop her but decided not to. Robin, on the other hand, turned to Batman and said, If that had been me or Connor, would you not have looked for us would you not try to save us? The work we do is dangerous. There are risks, risks that we all take and know of, said Batman. Yeah, risks. If that was Superman in there, you would move mountains to save him. You only care about what benefits you, and Raiden was a threat, said Robin as he too turned to leave. You both should be ashamed of yourselves, said Wonder Woman as she looked at Superman and Batman. She too turned to leave. Dinah, take care of them, spoke Batman. Yeah, right. You mess things up and expect me to magically fix it? If we don't find Raiden pretty quickly, this team might crumble. Where am I spoke Raiden? He opened his eyes, and it started hurting. The place was like a rainbow, but it was dark, too bright. Raiden was confused. He looked around. There was nothing. It was confusing. Too confusing. Where's up, where's down where's left and where is right it was jarring, felt like he was suffocating deep in water, but he could breathe easily. He felt in control of his body but couldn't move. What the heck? Master, you don't have much time. Use my noble phantasm once more. This will hurt you, but you don't have a choice. This place, it's a prison. The worst of its kind, spoke Edmund. Ugh, what? My noble phantasm now. Ugh, fine. And for Chateau d'If. Bright light was invoked from inside his body as some sort of gate opened up and saved him from the phantom zone. I had a mentor in my past life. Abbe Faria. I felt like I was that to you today, master. You and I. I don't understand it but I feel connected to you. Bond increased. Edmund Dante's bond one rightward arrow bond seven. Host can choose an active skill, determination of steel x golden rule a wisdom from desperation a. Without any hesitation, Raiden picked determination of steel x. He knew that this was his missing piece, the way to decrease his cool down between servants. Determination of steel x, the dynamism and mind of steel of the man who walked the path of revenge through his life after breaking out of Chateau d'If, the prison said to be hell on earth. A complete blocking of his sense of pain, resulting in a superhuman mind and body that can endure even super high speed action. In Raiden's case, the super high speed action was his body's transformation from a servant to another. With this skill, his body would be able to endure it much more. Ugh. Raiden woke up. He took a deep breath and then laid back on the bed. It wasn't comfortable, but he felt happy. He not only achieved his goal by enacting his revenge, but he was also now free to leave the Justice League. All he had to do was go bring Raven with him. Exhale. Kana Kalalo Kamairo Niandur. Raiden looked to his right. There he saw a child, a very different one. The child looked like she was eight but what was special to Raiden was her golden skin and her voice that clearly spoke a language he never heard of. The door to the right opened. A woman in her late twenties walked in, looking exactly like the child and having gold skin as well. Exhale. Karora. Kilaro Kamairo. The woman was clearly shocked to see Raiden awake as she grabbed her daughter and hid her behind her, 
looking at Raiden with a bit of fear. Come Iro. Nakaro no P.A.R.U., spoke the woman as she looked at Raiden with a stern look, as if she was warning him. I don't. I don't understand. Please don't be mad. I'm not dangerous. Spoke Raiden as he raised his hand, believing that to be the universal language of peace. After looking at Raiden for a few seconds, the woman walked towards him, very carefully. She then looked at him for a bit before shocking him with a kiss. It was a short 10 second kiss, but it was Raiden's best kissing experience. He and Raven weren't exactly professional. Whoa. That was unexpected, welcomed but unexpected, said Raiden. Stranger. Do you work with the invaders? The Citadel. Spoke the woman. Hey invader Citadel what are you talking about why did you even kiss me? Wait, why are you speaking English now? Said Raiden, excited, shocked. And confused. By the name of Exhal. You're not with them. Good. As for the kissing, it's how my race learns languages. That's why I kissed you. My apologies. If what you say is true, then there is no need for me to be angry. However, can you tell me where you're from asked the woman. Where I'm from I guess Coast City replied Raiden. Coast City the woman looked at him with confusion. Oh, I see. I get it now. What the fuck? Did I leave the planet accidentally said Raiden as he grabbed his hair. He then looked at the woman, sighed, and said. My apologies as well. I guess I look weird to you. My name is Raiden Kagawa, and I'm from the planet Earth. I don't know how far it is or even how to go back, so I would appreciate your help very much. Said Raiden, hoping to be welcomed. Ah, welcome Raiden Kagawa. I'm Noriandar, and this is my daughter, Carrie Andar. Welcome to Tamarin. Chapter 30, The Citadel. Ah, welcome, Raiden Kagawa. I'm Noriandar, and this is my daughter, Carrie Andar. Welcome to Tamaran, Noriandar spoke. Tamaran. And where is that exactly? asked Raiden, confused about his location. Hmm, I'm not sure how to explain that to a stranger, but I guess it's more accurate to say that we are in the Vega star system, replied Noriandar. Placing his hand on his chin, Raiden thought for a bit, then said, Yeah, I've got no clue. How long has it been since I arrived here? My daughter found you in the nearby woods 15 days ago. We realized that you were alive because you were breathing, so we took you in. The village doctor checked you and couldn't do anything to help you, explained Noriandar to Raiden. Hmm, so I'm in a village and you people just took me in, just because asked Raiden, confused as to why these people would care for what appears to be an alien to them. Back on Earth, if an alien was found, the first things humans would do are shoot and experiment on it. You don't look like one of the Citadel soldiers, so of course, we helped you. Besides, the princess said that we will only win this war with love, and I agree, replied Noriandar. Kalalo Kamairo Candle a Candle. Spoke the child, Kariandar. Noriandar turned towards her daughter, then kissed her. The kiss was much more tame than the one she had given Raiden. Can you hear me, stranger? Kari protects stranger. Kari loves stranger's hair. Golden eyes pretty. Spoke Carrie. Oh, thanks, I guess. You look cute yourself, Carrie, replied Raiden. Mama, the stranger said I'm cute. I'm happy. Said Cory. Of course, you are, my dear, said Nori. Nori then turned to Raiden and said, Let me show you the village, they will probably be happy to see you awake. Just as Nori said, the village was jubilant to see Raiden awake. Children were running around playing, and the elders gathered, asking him questions about his origin. Yes, of course, Mr. Cadebury. I will visit you next week, Raiden said as he held an old man's hand. He then turned to find Nori smiling at him. That was my 19th invitation. What's going on for real said Raiden, confused. There is nothing going on, it's just that my people are happy to see you, said Nori. Have you all never heard of the term stranger danger said Raiden. No, you just have to accept it, Raiden. Our race is emotionally driven. We love each other, we love others, we love everyone. We've always been a peaceful race. 
Unfortunately, the war with the Citadel has forced us to fight back, explained Nori. The Tamaranians have always been known as an emotionally driven race, and their emotions led them to be a very peaceful race with few wars in their history. Invasion you don't look like you are being invaded, said Raiden. Nori lowered her eyes a bit, as sadness filled her heart. We try to forget about it, but we've lost more than 80% of our land. This is one of the few places where we can be at peace, all because of Her Highness's grace. Her Highness. The princess said Raiden, questioning who this princess is. Yes, the second princess of Tamaran. She's been protecting the remaining areas, trying to fend off the citadel. But it has been fruitless ever since the betrayal of the first princess. The king was forced to surrender, she was kidnapped and experimented on by the citadel. She endured great hardships, yet still loyal to us and tries to protect us, explained Nori, saddened by the situation. Hearing the story, Raiden was also saddened by it. It reminded him a bit of his own situation. Whoa! Raiden heard a loud voice, it sounded like an alarm, and he was right, as Nori said, it's the alarm. The Citadel found our location, we need to hide now. The soldiers will handle the fight. Go home now, I'll try to find Carrie, said Nori as she grabbed Raiden's hand and tried to escape with him. Wait, I'll handle it, go inside, said Raiden as he headed towards the direction of the attack. Raiden, wait. It's dangerous. Screamed Nori as she chased after him. The two ran towards the direction of the screaming. There, Raiden got his first look at the citadel, they were huge beings, dark-skinned, and they all wore armor and had weapons ready. There were more than 50 of them. They were shooting people mercilessly, but the Tamaranians were fighting them as well. Damn it, Carrie is there. Said Raiden as he noticed her behind a house, hiding. I've got to do this now, throne of heroes. Said Raiden as he attempted to transform. Error, cool down not yet finished. Unable to transform. What? I was in a 15 day sleep coma. How long will this cool down take? Error, unable to calculate the cool down. Damn it. Damn it all. Raiden finally realized that this was due to his excessive use of the system, forcing it to summon a second servant after Heracles, and using a noble phantasm two times back to back. Doesn't matter, I can fight regardless. Alpha Epsilon Rho Omicron Kappa Epsilon Rho Alpha Iota Nu Omicron screamed Raiden as he used his magic to attack. The spell created a massive wind of electricity and took down six of the Citadel soldiers, but at the cost of them now recognizing him as a threat. Nari. Go get her and run now, I'll distract them, said Raiden as he headed towards the soldiers. The soldiers immediately started shooting him. Fuck. Hvri Raya Rab said Raiden as he created a barrier from the earth. Thank God I learned those spells from Zaytana. Let's see. Raiden scanned throughout the battlefield, he saw Nari get to carry. Shit, they are stuck. This will end all my mana, but fuck it, I'm immortal anyway, I think, spoke Raiden as he jumped off his cover and said, Hey, you fucks, come here. Machia Hecatic Grea. Behind Raiden, a wave of tens of magical circles opened up, releasing a rain of light upon the soldiers. Raiden managed to take down more than half of them and distract them with enough time to allow the villagers to escape. Nari and Kari also managed to get away. Shit, I'm losing consciousness. How the hell does Medea use this multiple times a day spoke Raiden as he fell to the ground, his vision lowering. He could see some soldiers that survived get close to him and point their guns at him. But before he passed out, he saw a green light hit the soldiers, as a woman came running his way, shooting the remaining soldiers with green beams of light. She flew in the skies, destroying the rest and saving Raiden. Raiden's mind was slipping in and out of consciousness. As she got down and looked at him, she carried him in her arms. Raiden looked at her and said, Yeah, I don't mind being princess carried by you, darling, as he passed out. Ugh, Raiden woke up. This just isn't funny anymore. I pass out at the end of every battle, said Raiden as he woke up. Before he could pay attention to his surroundings, a child jumped and hugged him. Brother Raiden. You're awake. It was, of course, Carrie. Yeah, I'm awake, Carrie. How are you doing said Raiden, worried about her. Mom came for me. She said it's all thanks to you, 
so I'm supposed to thank you. Thank you, Raiden. Said Carrie. Raiden smiled and said, No need, Carrie. It's my duty to save you. Keep this a secret, but I'm a hero. Huh, what's a hero? Hearing that, Raiden almost fell. Just forget about it? Where's your mom? asked Raiden. She's outside with the princess. I'll go get her. Said Carrie as she ran outside. Raiden sighed as he got up from his bed. He left the room, finding Carrie and Nori talking, and with them was another person. It was the woman from his last memories before he passed out. She had striking orange skin complemented by cascading red hair and vibrant green eyes. She was wearing what looked like a sports two-piece ensemble, but it had a royal feeling to it. It was purple and came with matching boots and gauntlets to complete her ensemble, boasting futuristic design elements. Oh Raiden, good morning. Thank you for what you did yesterday. The entire village is grateful, and so is the princess, said Nari. The princess in question looked at Raiden and then said, Come Iro, Caruso and Akolo. Raiden tilted his head toward Nari as she said, I'm not allowed to kiss the princess, no one is. But as if to contradict her, the princess walked to Raiden and kissed him herself. The princess placed her hand on his cheeks as she kissed him, tongue and all. She then released Raiden and said, Nice to meet you, stranger. My name is Coriandar, second princess of Tamaran, but you can call me Cori. A.N., hi author here. Sorry for interrupting your precious reading time. Please review the story if you can, for some reason, it has only been reviews 13 times. Please. Any star is appreciated. Also I want some feedback as well, so I know what kind of reactions I'm getting and try to improve myself. Thanks for reading. I would also like to say that the story has yet to be determined if it's a harem or not, I'm gonna put a poll in Patreon to see what the vibe is, one of the perks of my Patreons is having to decide major decisions such as this. So join it if you wish to support me or vote. Love you either way.